Looks like automation isn't just for the good guys anymore. The bad guys are doing it as well. Brian, you found an interesting story about uh, Docker security. Not quite the security of Docker, but of using other people's uh, Docker images. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Well, it's kind of interesting, and yeah, I think there are a few different things going on in this article, but I think it's an interesting article, and I'm not going to take credit for finding it, but I'll take a little bit of credit for walking through this with you here today. And by the way, it's good to see you again. Hey, uh, so this is a case, you know, the title here is Crypto Jacking Invades Cloud, How Modern Containerization Trend is Exploited by Attackers. I'm not sure I would treat that as more of an exploitation as much as it's taking advantage of the opportunities here. Mm -hmm. um, first, I think it's useful to talk a little bit about the terminology that is when we talk about containers, containers are really a way of packaging software so that you can run them in a cloud environment without having to spin up an entire operating system to support it. Yep. And then uh, Docker Hub is referred to in this article where uh, it's basically a place to house your uh, containerized uh, uh, software images, your container images. And then Kubernetes is also involved here in the sense that uh, Kubernetes is a means to help manage lots of containers, uh, perhaps on many servers and, and perhaps associated with many different applications. And so obviously this would be capability or tooling that would be very advantageous for somebody that runs a botnet. In this case, they are using it for uh, crypto mining, uh, like we have seen. Like uh, in this case, I think it's more specifically for Monero mining. They're leveraging the cloud environment resources to, you know, basically mine it in the automated fashion. So what folks are doing is looking for opportunities to uh, exploit Docker environments and take advantage of that by uh, deploying containers in there that perform crypto mining activities. So you know the real. I'll say crime here is that they're stealing compute resources from somebody else's account. Um, so my understanding of how this, this works is that they were actually compromising the Docker images that were posted to Docker Hub. So it's like saying, if I modify my version of, am I? No, well, there, there may be, in fact, cases like that, but okay. they're also using the Docker Hub as actually a, a deployment point for malware. And so they had their own account that was actually associated with uh, having basically distributing malware, okay. and uh, it was a you know basically there were five million pools that were associated with that, so that there was a significant amount of deployment of that software, and there you know have been a number of updates and things along the way to uh, pr improve it, but it was really in their case this particular case it was a specific year, a specific account that was associated with this uh, malware distribution. Okay. You are somebody who manages these sorts of environments using a lot of these Docker images or, or other uh, cloud orchestration type things where you can pull in images from other places. Being more aware of how to secure and make sure that you're not running somebody else's code is, is very important. And you know, it's, um, it's interesting because there has been certainly a surge toward or a trend toward more um, crypto mining activities and trying to use botnets for that type of purpose where we had seen a lot in the past they were used for denial of service attacks or other activities but I think perhaps the law enforcement activities toward protecting against denial of service attacks uh, and uh, you know it's a little difficult to earn money doing that that uh, it perhaps is moving more organizations or you know organized crime toward uh, doing uh, the crypto mining as a means to earn their revenue. I think it's also revenue. more lucrative nowadays actually with crypto mining rather than going with ransomware and DDoS. Right. I think uh, that's why we have seen uh, lots of ransomware targeting towards Monero mining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's definitely less risk involved in, in mining than there is in operating a, a DDoS for hire scheme, mm -hmm. for example, because yeah. you have to expose yourself to customers if you're running DDoS for hire. Here, you just have to get your software onto somebody else's machine and it makes money for you. Right. So here's my little uh, uh, little twist on this, the, um, the moral of the story, if you will. Um, first of all, you know, when you look at the fact that the criminals are trying to uh, use automation tools to help make 
their job easier and do it faster and at a greater scale, um, security teams need to really be paying attention to that as well. Well, you know, the bad guys are using automation, and so the security teams that are protecting organizations really need to be focused on automation to help essentially beat the arms race. The second one here is that uh, basically every computer or virtual machine or workload or container must be secure. Uh, and uh, last but not least here that um, we need to be careful in the cloud. There's a lot of new technology there. I think a lot of organizations are being pushed very quickly into cloud environments to solve their enterprise problems, do it at a lower cost. Uh, but when you have a lot of new technology, it's difficult to understand it very quickly. There's a lot of new technology there, a lot of opportunities to make mistakes, and so it's important to take advantage of the security features that are in these cloud environments and make sure they're being used in a robust way to help protect against those mistakes. That is, uh, there have been many news reports of exposures of data, uh, exposures of uh, in, you know, cloud environments that uh, could become a serious problem. On the good side of that, there are a lot of security capabilities that are becoming available in cloud environments, and so it's important to take advantage of those so that you can protect your environment and make sure that uh, it's protected well. I know we've been doing some things internally to uh, protect our public cloud uh, deployments of capabilities, not to mention our internal cloud, mm -hmm. and uh, have been actually finding a number of things that have been very valuable in terms of making sure that we're protected well mm -hmm. and uh, actually have an automated re remediation capability in place today. So it helps to protect against those that are learning and um, which we want them to learn, but uh, helps protect against them making mistakes in the process. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Oh, Thank you. My pleasure. It's nice to be back. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. Glad to have you.